The intervention I will be discussing is myrosine. To begin with, what is myrosine? Myrosine is a plant derived flavonoid, and flavonoids are plant compounds that are found in a variety of fruits and vegetables. They are known for their antioxidant and anti inflammatory properties. Common sources include vegetables, red wine, tea, berries, and nuts. It can either be taken in diet or in supplement form. It can be extracted from the root, leaves, and bark of southern wax myrtle. A lot of the research being done now is looking into how it can be used to treat or prevent the progression of Alzheimer's and dementia and Parkinson's disease in the future. The first study I will be discussing is an observational study that was published this year in 2020. It is called Dietary Flavanols and Risk of Alzheimer Dementia. So the objective is, is dietary intake of flavanols associated with the risk of developing Alzheimer's? There were 921 elderly participants who were dementia-free at the time of enrollment. They completed yearly neurological evaluations and dietary assessments for up to 12 years. Of the participants, 220 of them developed Alzheimer's. So researchers evaluated four subclasses of flavanols, one of them being myrosetin, and they found that participants who were in the top 20% of myrosine dietary intake had a 38% lower risk of developing Alzheimer's when compared to participants who were in the bottom 20% of myrosine dietary intake. The conclusion reached by the study was that higher dietary flavanol intake may be associated with the reduced risk of de developing Alzheimer's. High dietary flavanol intake and reduced risk of Alzheimer's was stronger in men than women. However, the reasons behind this are unknown. The top food contributors of myrosine were tea, wine, kale, oranges, nuts, berries, and tomatoes. This study is consistent with other findings that suggest that high flavonoid intake contributes to reduced cognitive decline. And future studies may look into the possible biological mechanisms behind this association. The second study was published in 2019 and it is the effect of myrosine on the loss of dopaminergic neurons in the transgenic Drosophila model of Parkinson's disease. So a little bit of background, Lewy bodies are aggregates of proteins that develop inside nerve cells, and they can cause neuronal damage in dopaminergic neurons in the brain and cause production of reactive oxygen species. This can cause oxidative stress, which can contribute to the progression of Parkinson's disease. So myrosetin at various concentrations were mixed in diet and the Parkinson's disease flies were allowed to feed on it for 24 days. After 24 days of exposure, the dopamine content was estimated in the brain. They found that there was a dose dependent increase in the antioxidant activity as well as in the dopamine content of the brain. They also found that there was the loss of dopaminergic neurons was protected. The findings suggest that the antioxidant potential of myrosine is responsible for preventing the loss of dopaminergic neurons and dopamine content. And potential research can look into how this is in, occurs in humans if it is the same effect. Myrosine also has anti-inflammatory effects and some of the properties include inhibiting enzymes involved in inflammatory responses. One recent study observed the effects of chronic oral myrosine administration in rats after a traumatic brain injury was induced in the rats. TBIs can produce cognitive disabilities and death, and the most frequent clinical symptoms of TBI are memory loss and unusual behavior or mental health disorders. So they observed neuroprotective properties and a reduction in oxidative stress. And they also found an overall improvement in the memory performance and motor coordination in the rats. Potential research can look into how myrosine can tr possibly treat chronic inflammation since it is a naturally occurring molecule. Future research studies can look into how myrosine may have anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties and can do even more studies in this area. They can also look into the molecular mechanisms behind how it improves cognitive deficits. More clinical trials are also necessary to observe its long-term effectiveness in humans and studies can also look into more into its neuroprotective properties. And these are my references.